welcome back to my channel so uh, this is now part two of my wind vane explanation video uh, I'm still here uh, along uh, the uh, Costa del Sol so I'm already into the Mediterranean uh, there somewhere is Armeria and I'm sailing along the coast although it's uh, headwinds and I have to tack against the headwinds and that's actually with this boat not really successful but uh, I'm so tired of motoring uh, that uh, I at least try it and um, it's perfect for uh, showing uh, how to use the wind vane properly we have uh, good conditions so the wind the wind is the wind is good uh, which means it's a gentle breeze uh, it's not too strong and not too weak so uh, the boat uh, as you can see is moving and uh, I will now explain how how to do this so the first thing simply is get up your sails uh, I did this already um, and uh, yes I'm uh, under full sail uh, full Genoa and I put the uh, the mainsail is in the first reef um, I did that because I expected the wind will pick up uh, as soon uh, as far as uh, as more far I get away from the coast and then it's a little bit more difficult to explain everything here so and so it, it runs pretty good so the first thing as I said is get your sails up go on to a course that you uh, would like to sail so for me that's now close hold and the first thing is that I have to balance my sail plan means I have to make sure that uh, the boat runs in a straight line by itself uh, as good as possible and I do that so at the moment I'm on the electric autopilot of course but uh, I uh, do that uh, that I try to hand steer the boat so I'm solo which means I'm almost never hand steering the boat but uh, for getting the sail plan right it's crucial so hand steer the boat for a while and observe if if it uh, if it runs good or if it tends too much to uh, windward or to leeward and depending on that uh, you have then uh, to adjust yourself so that's I'm going uh, to try to hand steer now. That's uh, the first thing I will do now. So this here is is roughly the the middle in in my case, and uh, boats have generally the, the tendency to go to windward, but uh, I leave it alone. And as you can see, it runs by itself. So it turns a little bit, you see a little bit more, which means we have a pressure to windwards, but it's really not much. And the boat steers a straight line. So it goes a little bit forward and backward, you can see. And actually this steering wheel, I have three turns for, for full uh, change from rudder left to right. So that's actually not really much. If I'm concerned about that, I would have to change my sail setup. And in this case, I have a little bit too much pressure to windwards, um, which comes uh, from, uh, it's, it's a matter of sail trim. So that means uh, if the boat turns too much windwards, you have typically too much, um, uh, too much pressure at the rear, meaning in the main sail, or too low in the front sail. So uh, that, that's always, if, if you uh, have too much pressure on the back side, then the boat will turn to windwards. If it's the opposite, if you have too much pressure forward, then the boat will turn uh, to leewards. So, in this case, it's really a little bit because all boats have generally the tendency to uh, uh, to steer to windwards if you leave them alone a little bit. That's because of uh, how it is basically designed. So it's, so it's an, a design issue, but still you can uh, uh, balance it out with, with, with the sails if you like. But that's, uh, that's a general goal. So I want the boat to have steer by itself more or less a straight line. Because if it does that, then uh, the wind vane uh, uh, doesn't have a big job to, you know, keeping it uh, 
permanently steering against that force. That's not good. It should have, um, it should steer by the wind, but it should not uh, permanently try to counterbalance uh, uh, whatever uh, incorrect sail setup. So, um, let's uh, get the wind vane ready. Uh, I will get the wind vane, I still have it below, and uh, then we will engage this here. So the first thing is that I will uh, put up the, uh, the wind vane, uh, so I open the star nut here and uh, I, I put it here on top. Uh, as I said in part one of, uh, of uh, this video series, you, you can't uh, put it in the wrong way so, so it doesn't fit it the other way. So the next thing is that I uh, adjust the course, uh, which means I open this star nut and now I can turn it and I let it point into the wind. So if I put it here, you can see that it comes a little bit here to me because the wind is from here. And if I turn it to the other side, you see it is pushed back. So I find a position where it's, let's say, more or less in the middle. That's, that's exactly this course. So that's not the last course, of course, I can adjust it, but that's where I start. So, so in this way that it pretty much points to the wind and then I fix this here again. So I fix it, now it can't turn anymore. And the next thing is that I put the, uh, the rudder gain somewhere in the middle. So it's now a light wind, actually it became lighter than expected, so I could have put up my full mainsail, uh, but I leave it for now, it works. So um, I uh, open this star nut here and move the rudder gain somewhere in the middle, it's not so exact. Uh, I will see then what the boat does. So I'm at the moment still running on the electric autopilot. So, And uh, now I can unlock it. So as I said in the original version, you have here a star nut where you simply unlock it. As I said, I broke it. So I have this bolt here. So I just removed this bolt here. And as you can see, it immediately starts to, uh, well, do something, so it, it moves to some direction. But we are still at the electric autopilot, so I will now uh, simply disconnect the autopilot, the electric. And uh, I will lock the rudder here in position. So the main rudder shall be roughly in the middle uh, and disconnect the autopilot. And that's what I'm going to do now, so switch off the... Uh, electric autopilot and uh, put the steering wheel in the middle and fix it that it does not turn anymore. It, it would disturb uh, the, the um, uh, self-steering unit. So, we have perfect conditions as I said, it's uh, definitely light winds and now I'm going to observe um, what the boat actually is doing. So, as you can see uh, this uh, moves to this and to the other direction, depending on which course it is, it, which course the boat steers. And as I said, it will never steer 100% a straight line. That's a goal that we want to achieve. So, and actually it works pretty fine. I guess that's because I already did 9,000 miles with this. <laughs> so I got it pretty right. Um, but we can play with it. I'd like to show what happens if we, uh, if we uh, let's say, uh, put it in the wrong way. Uh, which means I reduce the rudder gain uh, to a minimum. So I have uh, put it completely out now. So let's, let's have a look what, what, uh, what the boat does now. So it still does pretty well because of the boat is steering by itself. So let's see that from the front. I'd like to change the camera view. So that's what we, what it looks like if we look forward. Uh, and on the sunlight, uh, you can see 
uh, if, if the boat, uh, let's say, loses the course. So now it's uh, going to steer a little bit more to the right. And uh, it tries, uh, the wind wind tries to get it wind up. Yeah, right, right now, you see it gets more to the wind. Uh, but that is, uh, everything is happening pretty slow because we have um, a, uh, a very minimum rudder gain at the moment. So everything happens very slow. And of course you have to take into account that uh, the wind is not perfect. And as you can see, there are some white waves. So, uh, which of course disturbs the movement of the boat. So in my opinion, that feels not so good because it now makes very long uh, a wide um, curves uh, around the course. So I will uh, change the rudder again. Um, let's put it uh, to uh, the other uh, extreme, so at the maximum, and uh, have a look what happens then. So now I put it completely back. Um, to to the maximum uh, uh, amount that it can steer and observe what happens now. So the effect is that the rudder has a larger elongation which means it has more effect on steering the boat. And that actually will uh, make the boat steering quicker to the course but it can happen that it will oversteer and oversteering means that it uh, steers so far or so close to the wind that the aerodynamics, uh, so that the sails stall, actually there is no aerodynamic uh, effect anymore. Uh, and this will cause that the boat will get immediately slower and fall back to leeward. Um, and of course then the uh, wind wane uh, will try to correct. So as soon as the boat falls to leeward, it will get uh, gain some speed anymore. It will heal gain some speed, and the same thing will happen. So that's the effect of oversteering. So it actually happens now. Um, it's difficult to show you, but uh, let's have a look at uh, um, at uh, the front. And this looks like this. So as you can see, we're currently steering pretty into the wind. And now the move the boat falls to the right, so to leeward, very far away from the sun. And uh, the wind wind will now pick up again as soon as the boat uh, gets uh, uh, more speed. And you see we steer again back to the sun. The boat of the heel then goes away and then it will fall back again. So you see it's, we are falling back again from the wind and then to the wind. You see, we're going to look at the sun, so where the sun is. We're almost pointing into the sun now. The boat, the boat is getting slower, I can feel it here. Uh, and because of that it will fall back down. So, and that is uh, something you don't, don't want to have because you always lose speed and, and you make really, you're, you're going in this, uh, in this way. So that means that I will uh, put it somewhere into the middle. This is also the, the wind, we have a gentle breeze, so it's not light, but not strong. It's simply somewhere in the middle. So I put the rudder gain, uh, rudder gain again in, in, in the middle because uh, then it will will work pretty well. So it's now in the middle again and I observe what it is doing a little bit and uh, it looks pretty good. So uh, it, uh, let's say, does not, it's not a perfect straight line but uh, uh, um, more or less uh, almost a straight line. Um, and uh, it, it will never steer a 100% straight line, uh, but that's, uh, uh, that's because of the nature. So also the wind is not perfect, 
always at some specific, let's say 14.0 knots. So the wind changes a little bit. The waves disturb, always disturb the movement of the boat. So they slow the boat down. Uh, and this causes the apparent wind to shift, uh, which then will uh, uh, cause the wind wing um, uh, to, to turn in some direction. Because the wind wing, of course, I did not say that before but the, the wind vane is steering according to the apparent wind. So as soon as the apparent wind changes, uh, the wind vane will react to it. And changes to the apparent wind typically come with uh, um, uh, if uh, either the speed or the direction of the wind changes and the speed of the, uh, direct, uh, the, speed of the apparent wind changes if either the true wind changes or the speed of the boat changes and that's what it makes a little bit uh, tricky general uh, not just to set up the uh, wind vane but general to set up the sails properly you're sailing with always with the apparent wind keep that in mind so you might ask how to change the course now. So we're sailing, well, pretty close hold now at the moment. And, uh, well, um, what could we do now? Actually, we could uh, tack because I'm getting uh, more far away from the coastline. I could show you how to tack with it. So, um, actually, with this boat, I can't tack at all because of the cutter stay that I have here which means I go around and uh, uh, do a complete chive with it so uh, let me show how uh, this works completely just with the self steering unit so part one hole in the main sheet So the next thing is I uh, turn it uh, to a broad reach and ease the Genoa sheet. So where always think where would a broad reach be then? So at the moment the wind is from here, so from the front, and the broad in the case of the broad reach, the wind would then come from this direction, which means I have to point the uh, the wind vane to this direction. So I simply open this and let the front side point there and immediately the boat starts to turn in this direction and now I ease the Genoa sheet That, by the way, would be far easier if I would have a second person to uh, hold all the cameras. <laughs> so, and the next thing is just uh, go through the wind, which means is I turn it further to the broad reach on the other side. So like this, and now the sail will come over. So now let's get the sail in. So now I get uh, close hold again by turning this further to the wind and I got in my uh, main sheet, so I eased the main sheet a little bit again. So, and now, it's uh, picking up speed again. We're heading to the coastline. And now I'm looking at, uh, at the wind vane, what, what it is doing, and I, if I'm happy with that. If I just roughly turned it to... Uh, uh, to the wind at the moment so that must not be 100% which means I can now I hold it here and I open this 
and I can now adjust it a little bit more further to the wind or so uh, further to the wind is this direction or more away from the wind so in depending what what uh, I'm, I want to uh, what I want to achieve so uh, I'd like to go a little bit more closer to to the wind so I turn it so in this direction and let's see what happens again I'm looking at my at my sails you see it comes up now but that was a little bit too much because I lost the aerodynamic uh, aerodynamic flow on the sails so and that could be corrected by um, either turning a little bit back or reducing the rudder gain a little bit uh, what I actually will do the wind picked up again a little bit So reducing the rudder gain uh, reduces the effect of oversteering. But if you reduce it too much, then the boat won't be able to steer at all because of too uh, of the pressure on the rudder being too low. So that's uh, that's uh, the balance you you want uh, to find uh, with this. So I reduce the rudder gain. It comes up a little bit. So it's extremely close hold now. Uh, I will check my sails again if everything is good. Probably get in the Chenua a little bit more. As you can see, uh, the Chenua, uh, the Chenua is uh, losing the aerodynamic flow. Uh, so this can be compensating, compensated by either getting it, cl getting it closer in uh, or not steering so close to the wind. So of course there are there are some maximum values that you cannot uh, overcome, of course. So for the moment I will try to get it a little bit closer in. So I got the channel a little bit more in, but as you can see uh, on the telltales it's still not perfect, which means I'm a little bit too close. Um, it, it's really just a little bit. Um, but the self-steering unit uh, tries hard. Uh, I simply will adjust the course a little bit back from the wind, so to lowards again, that it does not steer so hard to the wind. So I hold it here, I open it, and it's really a tiny, a tiny fraction. So just a few degrees, I turn it back so that uh, the boat goes a little bit more to leeward. Uh, and then I, so, uh, I observe the same thing. So be careful to not uh, get your fingers here because that's steel and it has power. And uh, it looks pretty good. So if you look forward, we can see that it again does not perfectly steer uh, a, a straight line but uh, almost although I'm still not 100% happy with it which means uh, I will again try to reduce the rudder gain uh, again a little bit more because uh, the wind picked up and the speed of the boat is much higher so so much a little bit higher than it was before so we are doing uh, uh, 5.5.7, 5 decimal, 5 decimal 8 knots here. So I reduce the rudder gain uh, again a little bit. Oh wow, we are crossing the 6 knot, the 6 knot line, 6.2. So that's cool. And now I'm very happy with the setup. Uh, it runs very fine. Uh, and if you look forward, we can see that it steers a pretty good line at the moment. So what I didn't do now is, if you recognize, so I had a little bit, it's a little bit difficult for me to film all that and do all that. Um, but I didn't hand steer at the moment. So, and I completely changed the setup. I'm now on the other side of the boat and boats are all never symmetric so it may be that uh, now um, it uh, it's not in balance anymore and if you're unsure in that case 
and I myself, I'm not 100% sure if I'm in balance right now. Let's simply try to hand steer. Just open, uh, just open the lock of your steering wheel and try to hand steer. Look what, what, what happens and you, it will immediately tell you uh, what's going on. So, uh, and that's what I'm going to try uh, right now. So open this again. Try to hand steer, and you see. So hand steering, hand steering means I, I leave it uh, pretty much alone, and observe what happens. So you see, it turns. So here, this is this is the middle at, uh, of my boat. So I have these here. But you can see it's uh, still pretty balanced. So. So here, here would be the middle, but but that's you know. It's still pretty cool. So it works. Uh, the the rudder is still open, and uh, as you can see here, uh, it uh, well, it's more or less in the middle. Sometimes it turns a little bit to uh, windward, of course, but that it turns back. So I'm pretty happy with the setup and uh, then I will lock uh, the steering wheel again in position and uh, let the wind vane steer and as you can see the whole time here behind me uh, it's doing uh, its job pretty well and if we look forward uh, we can see that we are really steering a, a pretty straight line and the reason for the straight line is first that the sails are more or less in, pa uh, more or less in balance uh, and that I did the setup here correctly. So that means it points to the right direction. So to, in this uh, case, a uh, close hold. And as the speed picked up of the boat, um, I reduced the rudder gain compared to the other direction. We had, uh, the speed was, uh, the wind was, was lower, uh, was weaker. So the boat was slower. Now we are going faster. Um, and as a consequence, I reduced the rudder gain here um, uh, to uh, compensate the oversteering, uh, oversteering effect of the boat. So uh, again, uh, the goal is to have the boat steer as straight as possible and always having uh, aerodynamic, aerodynamic effect on, on, on the sails to, to not lose them. And oversteering usually means losing the aerodynamic effect on the sails, which means boat will become slow and that's not what we want. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the sail balance, the aerodynamics. So uh, that's a course on, on how to trim sails. So there are much other better videos out there. Just a few words. So. Um, Basically, the sails, um, there are a few tricks to get the sails balanced. The boat is designed in such a way that if the sail plan uh, is according to the specification, it runs more or less in a straight line or it tends a little bit uh, uh, to uh, steer to windwards. And um, to get that right, that balance right, so this is of course an assumption for let's say some generic wind conditions. Since the wind conditions change every day, you always have to adjust sails. And basically you can do two things. The first thing is choose the right sail area. And to keep the balance as good as possible, so as a rule of thumb, you should uh, reef both sails, so the main sail and the fore sail, uh, the head sail and the main sail in the same way. So don't just reef uh, the main sail or don't just reef the Genoa because this will automatically cause some kind of imbalance. So as a general rule of thumb, of course boats are a little bit different, you will find out what's the best way to do it with your boat, but again as a rule of thumb, to keep this balance, do reef both sails, so head sail and mainsail in the same amount. So then 
the, the, let's say the pressure point of the sails will keep at the same uh, position. If it, if it doesn't keep at the same position, position and it gets more forward or more backward, then automatically the boat will start to uh, turn more to windward or to leeward, depending on where this pressure point is. So, and the next thing is that you can trim your sails, of course. Uh, and what you do with, with uh, trimming sails is actually adjusting the lift of the sails. So the lift is it's the same thing as with aircrafts. It's what keeps them flying. Uh, and it's the same that we have here, just instead that the wing is like this and the lift is causing uh, to pull the boat through the water. So we can, with the sail trim, we can adjust the lift. So how much force pulls on the sail. And that's the same thing. If we have a different sail trim on the head sail or on the, uh, as on the main sail, then there is, there is some imbalance and uh, let's say the maximum pressure point, so that's the point of all combined forces, uh, tends to move further back or further forward and then your boat will start to um, steer to windwards or to leewards, depending on where the point is. So what we want to do generally is there is um, um, there is not just lift, so so it all also that everything so we can't increase the lift just for nothing. So it will also uh, if you increase the lift, the boat will start to heal more and more and more, which brings an imbalance as well. So uh, we want to have, uh, of course, the boat sail as upright as possible which actually means reducing the drag on the sail which at the same time means reducing the lift which makes it slower so that means if we reduce the lift then we reduce the drag as well and then it starts to heal so and the, the, the so what we want to achieve is to find a balance somewhere where it's perfect so there is no perfect setup it's always between the one and the other point and we will find and we want to find a point somewhere in between. So increasing the lift means making the sails more more curved and that at the same time increases the, the drag and the heel. And if we make the sails more flat then we get the, we get less lift, less drag but less heel. So, and as a general rule of thumb, what probably all of you know is um, if the boat is, uh, if the wind is strong, we want to have flat sails to reduce all these, uh, all these effects. And if there is, the, the wind is weak, then we increase the lift and all those effects because the wind is so weak. So, play with your boat. So the best thing, in my opinion, is of course read a book how all that works, uh, but then go out, sail, start to adjust your your sails, uh, uh, play with the wang, play, play with the sheets, with the travel, with everything you have there, uh, and watch the the outcome. Watch what the boat is doing. Is it getting faster? Is it healing more? Uh, is it doing this or that? So, or is it steering more to windwards, leewards, what is it actually do? So, go out, sail, try it out, and uh, of course, again, I just can recommend uh, uh, buying a self-steering unit if you're going on a long trip. Um, it's the only way which uh, does uh, for a long time, because the electric autopilot will for sure suck out your uh, your battery reserve and specifically if you're short-handed or even single-handed as I am you need an, you need a self steering or an autopilot I almost never steer the boat myself 
because I have to do other things. I have to set up the sails, I have to eat, to navigate, to sleep, all that. So there is nobody here. If you have a big crew, of course, then you can put somebody at the helm uh, and let him steer the boat. But uh, if you're short-handed or single-handed, then of course there is nobody. So that's it. I hope um, you learned something uh, new about the wind wane. You understood this. Um, please, uh, if you like it, uh, be extra nice to the like button and um, consider to subscribe my channel. Uh, if you're interested in this specific pro win, don't hesitate uh, to contact uh, uh, Imre from Estonia. So the link is below in the description. You find it there. Uh, well, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.